Hey YouTube, it's Cyclone. How are you doing? I got a tasty treat tonight for our beer archive. This should be very pleasant. Um, it's actually been several months since I've done a beer from this brewery, but you know, if I have it all the time, it will be not quite as special. Guys, I'm back to Trillium. Back to the OG, the one that started it all for me and really getting into beer significantly. Guys, this is a permutation series. This is a brand new beer. This is their 6.56. This is Imperial Stout with coffee, but it's 11.5%. Now, I love PM Dawn. It's my favorite coffee beer, I think, on the planet. It's, it's basically perfection when it comes to just straightforward coffee stout. I'm wondering if this has some of those elements at a higher ABV. I'm very excited about this beer. Um, <clears throat> part of this was aged in the stainless fermenters, while the other half is fresh coffee stout. They combine the two, to my understanding, and that's what you get. You get this extremely robust imperial with notes of coffee, chocolate, caramel, um, I think they, they also mentioned butterscotch or something like that. There was something else on the website. Um, you can go review the website. But all I know is that I want to see how this compares to PM Dawn, which is like my go-to. This is a bigger ABV. I'm very excited about this. We have Can Dawn, the third. Today's the seventh, guys. A four-day-old beer. Come on. Let's go. Let's crack it open. I'm sorry for my voice. I'm getting over some laryngitis. My apologies. If I had three thumbs, I would give you them for the nose. I can already tell you. It smells like a friggin' espresso mocha. The coffee is blasting my, my face off from here. It smells like I just walked into a goddamn coffee shop. Oh, and this is going to be delicious. I can already tell you. These guys know how to do tons of styles, but the one I feel like is most underrated... These guys are the best coffee stout makers in the game, man. I, I'm sorry. The coffee. I put this here, and the coffee has blossomed into a barista. This is ridiculous. I'll be able to get all of it in here, maybe. Yeah, it's, it's not that carbonated, but it's 11.5%. That's fine. I'll, I'll leave a small drop for the bonus pour. Wow. Zero light. Oh. It's beautiful. It's, that's a beautiful beer. Look at that. Finger of head. P jet black. We, it, is, it is as dark as midnight, guys. Wow. Okay, let's get a real nose on this. It's beautiful. So much coffee. So much hard ground coffee. Oh, that's so good, man. There's notes of espresso and notes of like mocha and java. Chocolate. A little bit of fudginess. I think I was reading there's some fudginess in this beer. Oh, is there even peanut butter on that nose? Hang on. There's some vanilla maybe. It's some of that sweet malt that you get in there. In their stouts. Oh my man. Let's try this, guys. Cheers. That is absolutely delicious. Big. Massive coffee. Big. There's that chocolate covered pretzel taste on the. Oh. Mmm. Oh, yep, it has that chocolate covered pretzel. Maybe a hint more on the espresso side than PM Dawn is. It's kicked up a notch. There's almost this green coffee bitterness in here um, that I am definitely not opposed to. Um, the base of the beer is so velvety smooth. And again, this is a little bit cold. I, I need this to warm. I am very curious to see 
how the dessert notes appear in here because the coffee notes at this point are blasting everything else away. Oh. Roasted malt, dark chocolate, espresso, no alcohol, smooth as, again, it's literally liquid velvet. Slight bit of, again, there's a slight greenness on the bittering factor. Just a slight. There's something, there's something in this glass. I'm telling you, I love their coffees. I love them. I, I, if you said one brewery and one style of beer for the rest of your life, this is on that list. Like, this is a definite contender. Trillium Coffee Stouts. Man, it's so much coffee. It's so much. It's so much coffee. It's so smooth, so velvety. If you like espresso, if you like roasted coffee. Get Trillium coffee stouts. What the hell are you doing? Why are you still here? Uh, anyway, guys, I'll be right back. With my final thoughts. Hey guys, Cyclone back here with the permutation six point five six, the Imperial Stout brewed with coffee. Guys, this beer is coffee crazy. Um, pure, straightforward. The nose could be the best smelling coffee beer I've ever experienced. Uh, that is, that's the best smelling coffee stout I've ever smelled. It's it's right up there. I mean, I think it might even pass PM Dawn, which was my previously favorite coffee nose, but this one. It has just a slight more kick of bitterness on it, just a little bit more robustness, if you will, that makes it smell like absolutely pure coffee. It's like espresso mocha coffee mixed together. It's so roast forward, it's unbelievable. I could smell that all the damn time, man. It's so damn good. Now, the taste, mouthfeel and alcohol, perfect. The flavor is just perfect for what it is. I look at the description, Imperial Stout with coffee, and that's exactly what I taste. Oh, it's so good. That's so good. First of all, as with most stouts, but especially these Imperial Coffee Stouts, you want them to warm. Don't drink them cold. The flavor starts to break. The molecules start to spread out a little bit. The flavor starts to come out. So when you drink it, you start to get this more cohesive package. The coffee and the dark chocolate just wash over your whole palate. It's so delicious. The finish is slightly roasty, but actually kind of refined. It's not leaving a ton of aftertaste. It's just like, I can still get this nice dark roasty, you know, after breath, so to speak. It's like I just drank a cup of coffee. It is so much like coffee. And I would liken it to a Starbucks mocha uh, with more malt in it, um, but better because the mouth feels so perfect, and there's zero alcohol. We're at 11.5%. So they've nailed all the categories and the info on the can and the price. Having the beer like this at 20 bucks for four-pack with all this coffee flavor, this blows out 99% of competitors out of the water. Like, we're at that ABV where I get really excited. You know, 9 to 12% coffee stouts really start to get me going. I'm like, yeah, what are you making over there, pal? And it's like, I'm making something that tastes just like coffee in a glass. Would you like to try some? What Trillium is so good at doing is turning the coffee stout into coffee. This is, I would argue, more like coffee or a coffee-like beverage than it is a beer. 
That's the craziest part of all. That's why it's a 10. I give it 10. Another 10 by Trillium. What a surprise. Are you guys surprised at this point? I'm not surprised. The nose is a 12. It smells like a goddamn, you know, I will put the open the coffee grinder at, at the coffee shop and I stuck my face in there. That's what it smells like. It's ridiculous. That's outstanding. I just can't wait. That's that's outstanding. I can't wait to see the spin-offs of this. Because this could be their new front runner. Because PM Dawn is outstanding, but it's only 9%. Or 9.5. It's one or the other. This is 11 and a half. This is like a, you, you notched it up a little bit. We're finally entering the real imperial category. This is so good. I put a little bit of coconut on here, or hazelnut, or vanilla, or whatever. Uh, I'm going to be blown away. Now, the one thing people may not love about this is the fact that there's not any dark fruit or complexity beyond the coffee and the dark chocolate. That's, I'm getting straightforward, espresso, coffee, like ground up coffee, and I'm getting dark chocolate, fudgy dark chocolate, dark chocolate chunks, and roasted malts, and I'm not getting anything else. Um, I'm getting a slight greenness from the Barrington coffee. So... This is a little bit on the roasted bitter side, and some people may be looking for something a little bit sweeter. And this is not sweet. This is your bitter, robust chocolate type of thing. Uh, so it is exactly what is advertised and exactly what I was expecting and hoping for. Um, it met all expectations and hopes. It's a 10. And only Untapped has a review because Beer Advocate's kind of on the wayside. Um, it's a 4.21 here. That's a good score, but not high enough. I don't feel like some of the people drinking this expected the coffee punch. This is, you need to love coffee. If you do not like coffee, avoid this at all costs. Oh man, that's so freaking good. Right on the back, there's this dark chocolate that goes through there. And it's fudgy. But the coffee is all throughout it. That is really freaking good. The mouth feels perfect. No alcohol. Excellent price information. It's a 10. It's Trillium. What do you know? It's another one in the books. Cyclone like signing out. See you on the next review. Hey guys, Cyclone back here with some more beer from Trillium. Today we're going into IPA land with their gift receipt, guys. This beer was canned in late December, the 24th, and today is the 8th of January, so it's a fresh beer. Uh, it is a triple IPA coming in at 10%. Um... Actually, the can below here says 1230, so it's actually newer than what the uh, label says. So this label is not quite accurate. I hear, I mean, a 10% IPA from Trillium really gets me interested because I think that big IPAs, when done well, are some of the most robust, fruity beers you can have. Hoppy, complexity, and tons of citrus notes. Let's see what this beer has to offer. It's a Trillium beer, so we're going to get a dark orange color. Yep. It's actually a little bit darker than I anticipated. About two fingers ahead, guys. But it's very cloudy. Look at that. Looks really nice. Looks really nice. I mean, just a very... Small hint of light in the bottom. Let's get a nose on it. Big, fresh cut mango. That's the biggest thing that jumps out right now. This is still a little bit cold. Wow, big mango. Very sweet orange, like almost candied orange. Very, there's a little bit of that dry, candy dry fruit going on. Maybe some apricot. Definitely getting some mango though. It's like crazy. 
a little bit of grapefruit starting to show up now. Uh, I, I'd say it's a little bit more on the candied, fruitier side than it is the, you know, tart, citrusy side. Apricot is in there. Uh, I'm very uh, I'm very interested when I start smelling things like apricot in my IPA. That really gets me excited. Peach. Oh, peach is absolutely there. Big time peach. Big time mango. Oh, that smells awesome. Guys, let's dig into this one and see what it brings. It's a trillium. Let's go. That is absolutely delicious. That is absolutely delicious. Wow. Big beer. That is that is hot on steroids. Wow, is that good. Look at that. Does that make you thirsty, anybody? I mean, nice dark orange. Oh, the apricot, the peach, the mango flavor is off the charts. Just think orange in your head, and that's kind of the fruit that I'm getting. It's all of those things. Oh, yeah, man. Oh, that's so awesome. Nice and thick, very smooth. There's a nice little green bite coming in. That's a great contrast to the candied fruit that I'm getting. Ooh, that's really good. This is a big, bold beer. Doesn't hold back, and this will definitely be too much for the inexperienced craft beer drinker. So make sure you put on your drinking shoes. There's a great bittering on the end there. That's really well done. That's very impressive. That's actually... Wow, that's really impressive. It's just so full-bodied and, and, and tasty. There's so much profile on here. That lingering hop is awesome. It's just sticking to my tongue, and it won't go away. It's the best part of Trillium beers. You get hot breath for days afterward. It's like, oh, I might need a piece of gum after this. That, that's how hoppy these beers are. That's how so flavorful they are, you know? That's freaking delicious. Oh, wow, is that delicious. It's a little bit of candied fruit, juicy fruit, and there's a little bit of greenness just to kind of punch you back into the IPA territory. It's not malty at all. It's just a thick mouthfeel, but it's all about the the citrus, the even slight candied fruit taste, and then that greenness on the back, which is I'm loving that greenness. Tastes like white grapefruits, tart grapefruits, and just this little bit of uh, white onion. And it's just like, bam. You know, it's like right in the back. It's candied and it's a little bit bitter together. Oh, it's so good. That's delicious. You guys understand where I'm going to put this on my roof? I have to have it warm, but I'll tell you my final thoughts in just a bit. Guys, Cyclone back here with Trillium's gift receipt. Their 10% triple IPA. This is outstanding, guys. Absolutely world-class. There is a fantastic blending of candied and citrus fruit notes, especially mango, pineapple, grapefruit, orange, and um, apricot. That is also complemented by this very nice and strong green onion hoppiness. The two blend together so well, you're getting that whole complexion right there. The, the breath that you get is pure hoppiness and citrusiness. It just, it's there for days and it doesn't go away. Super smooth on the, on the, on the mouthfeel and booziness is not even a problem. Oh, that, that's so good, man. Your tongue just lights up with flavor. It's like, that's so freaking good. It's so tasty. I think this is one of my favorite IPAs from Trillium. I think maybe ever. But definitely, I mean, I've kind of slowed down on my beer consumption as of late. But if I had to tell you, like, go out and get one, 
This is on my list. This one is a go out and get it. No doubt about it. If you see Trillium and 10% IPA, chances are you really should go get it. And, and this is no exception, guys. They, I'm glad they have a labeled 10% IPA in their, in their arsenal. Uh, I'm going to go get it. You know, when I see it, if I'm lucky enough, I'm going to go get another pack of this, another pack here, another pack there, as often as I can get this thing. It's so fucking good. It's a 10 plus. It's, it's, it's good as it gets. And it actually is getting to that level of the streets, which as some people who watch my beer reviews may know, is my favorite IPA of all time. It's a 10.5% roughly 8 hopped IPA, which is really for the experienced fan. You have to build your palate up to these beers. Trust me when I tell you this. Because in the early days, I thought that something like Dragon's Milk was a boozy drink. Like I could handle it, but I didn't really appreciate it. Once your palate you, it goes up, you start being able to taste nuance. And you start, beers like this become a lot more enjoyable. But you have to get there. And you can't just jump into this after you start drinking you know, Sam Adams and other beers like that. Get your palate acclimated to the 6 and 7% IPAs. Then, then give the 8 and 9s a try. And then you're comfortable with double IPAs. Hop into one of these. That is fantastic. Wow. It's getting a 4.32 on untapped. It's a good score, but I think it's better. Um, I think this is too robust for some people. It has that green onion hoppiness, but the candied and citrus fruit is with it. So it just is the perfect, in my opinion, the perfect IPA uh, profile. You're getting the citrusiness and you're getting a little bit of that bitterness, which IPA was based on. So I'm getting the hoppiness, I'm getting the fruitiness on a great mouthfeel. What else can you ask for, guys? That's going to do it for me. Cyclone signing out. See you next time.